power of persistence. And then a message from current Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He says, Sri Narendra Vaval has done commendable work in bringing India and Kenya closer. Amazing. Welcome to the set, Narendra. Uh, it, you know, you talked about the relationship you had with Prime Minister Modi. You go way back, actually. He was a tea seller. Yes, and he was. tell us about that story of how you grew up together. See, the story is that, of course, I know him since very long, since I was young. Uh, and your friend will be, when you don't have anything, the, your friend will be also the same. They don't have anything. Right. Because when you have something, when you have money, people will ask you the question, how are you? <laughs> when you don't have the money, they will ask you, who are you? <laughs> so I was uh, feeling comfortable with him because he didn't have much of uh, availability of anything except the tea. And uh, I didn't have availability of the buying given a tea. Yeah. So it was a very close relationship with him from very long, before he, bec he went into the uh, prime minister seat. Mm. Fascinating read, uh, Narendra. Uh, real quick, um, the, the publisher, Bloomsbury, yes, they sir. offered you a million dollars up front for yes, this book. Sir. Yes, sir. Up front. This was back in May. Back in month of May, to give my rights. To give the rights. Yes. This sir. book was published three weeks ago. Yes, sir. Right? 18th of August. It's already a bestseller. It has become bestseller last week. It has made that million dollars, which by the way, you refused, right? I, I refused. I, I didn't go for it. I said, let me stay as a partner so that whatever the profit comes, uh, we share it. And your profit, your every bit of your profit yes. is going to charities. In Kenya, for Kenyan children, education, uh, food and uh, medical. Wow. Worldwide, whatever the income will come. You know, take us through your beginnings. Uh, many people are so moved by the fact that you started uh, very poor, sometimes going to bed hungry, and all of a sudden we find you being one of the richest men in Africa. Forbes Africa put you on that list. Uh, take us through that journey of how you came to Kenya. You became a priest's assistant first. Uh, did you see yourself coming into this position of owning a multi-million dollar company? See, I... I, I come from a Brahmin family, uh, which is a priest caste. In India, there is a four caste. One is a priest caste. And I never dreamed about that I will be, um, I will have some money, I don't know, billion or whatnot, but I, I was expecting that once I have 100,000 rupees, my story is done for my life. And that will give me uh, sufficient income for my life because if I put it in the bank, I'll get maybe a thousand or thousand five hundred rupees a month, and that is sufficient in India to run a family in a month. So that was my dream, uh, and that's a big dream for me at that time. I did, I, I do come from a poor family. It was very big struggle. Many times I have eaten. Uh, uh, it is in the some chapters in the book also, but eaten uh, what you call unga. Because when you, you know, when you buy unga, when you take it to the grinder and put it into the container and carry it on the... So you get hungry because I was a very, very young boy. And when you are young, you get hungry. Today, you, we walk for eating. That time I was walking for getting the food. Yes. So I used to come with the, the, the container of the, the unga, which is very hot. So I used to put my hand and, and, and eat it, and it was so tasty <laughs> that I don't, I don't know uh, how to explain, but it was so tasty that I, I, I used to get satisfied by the time I reached. So that was the time, and uh, God sent me here as a priest in 1978 in the temple. After three years, I went back to, to India. I came back, started a small shop in Gikomba, uh, which is uh, Steel Center Limited, me. And my wife, I got married in Thika. So I think God helped me to, to grow and we worked very hard. Me and my wife both worked very hard and we, we worked together and we kept our people together. Still the people who are working with me are working with me. Wow. Billions and billions of dollars later, you say you want Kenyans to soon have or own a piece of Devki. You've written your book by 2020. Yes, sir. Y you want to list this? I would like to list the, the company. Uh, we have, I have a dream that to Kenya to become an import-free steel uh, country. Yeah. And that is only possible if we make the steel from iron ore and 
the way the first world country and the South Africa makes, Russia makes, India makes, uh, that's called a, a primary steel. At the moment, all Africa making uh, secondary steel. Secondary means melting the scrap and, and making the steel. So we want to make it from the iron ore and uh, want to, I have a dream to make Kenya import free and that's the time I want to go for the public and I won't and I will not go public until unless I'm not sure that my shareholder will get better return from me. I don't want to take their money. I will be more worried by taking the money of the people if I am not able to be a best custodian. And let's stick on business because uh, you drew the attention of Aliko Dangote, who happens to be the richest man in Africa. Yes, he, he is. He offered to buy uh, the company. You said no. Uh, why is that? Of course, you have an attachment to the company, which you grew from Gikomba up until where it is yes. now. But you said, I'm keeping this. See, once you, you create something, it becomes uh, uh, next to your heart. And second thing, my company has got the policy uh, of uh, uh, a lot of CSR and I, I will be honestly, I will be telling that I, I don't need money. I need money, you don't know how much I have, I don't know how much you have, but still we are sitting on the same table. So money in the bank, maybe bank is enjoying. Bank is telling that we is billionaire, we, but nothing comes with you. I had written one small saying in my book that when we die, uh, in Indian, we put plain cloth without any pocket, so you are not going to carry anything with you. And in the grave, there is no cupboards that you can put. And the and the and the gods, uh, the workers who comes to pick you, also doesn't take corruption. So you are not going to carry your money. So we want to leave it here. What were, your question was that I want to go, as I told you, when I'm sure that I will be able to give better better return to the people. That's the time I will go public. Fascinating story. Amazing. You know, I have to ask this because uh, when it comes to the humility that you exude, many people think you have airs about you. Mm -hmm. You're a billionaire. You rub shoulders with very powerful people. Uh, you call many of our presidents, former presidents, close friends. But yet you maintain this humility. Where does that come from? Uh, because when I, uh, uh, frankly speaking, and uh, everybody should enjoy that, that when you are sitting on the elephant, you will not be able to notice, uh, you will see dog walking very small like an ant. But when you walk down on the earth, you will see exact size. And uh, that's what I do. I would like to walk on the earth. I want to walk on the, uh, uh, on the ground. And I want to enjoy each and still I go to the kiosk and eat and that sometimes gives me a lot of joy. I eat with my workers and I never felt that they are, we are different. No, we are the one and I, I, I enjoy so much that that's, people are missing it. Yeah. What do you want people to take away from this? Because it's somebody, really, it's, this, the writing is very simple, by the way, yes, nice sir. and simple. And you know, you can get through it very quickly. Yeah. What do you want people to take away from this long walk to success? This book will, why I have written, is a reason is a, not for anything to gain because my business is earning better than the book. But I want to gain that, I want to see in Kenya and all world over, the children are studying. I've seen many parents in Kenya have sold their property to educate their children and still they are at home. I was watching just now about 20 minutes ago on your news that Anthony was mm. graduate, yeah. but he's uh, started his something. Mm. That is what this book will give. Even if you are not educated, you can be a billionaire. This book will give. Any children will read this book, will never commit suicide. Any children, any entrepreneur will read this book, will never see that I am failure. And he will never change his target. That what I want to do in my life, he will never be changing it. He will be successful person. And after this book, if I get five children, or five entrepreneurs to be successful, I've done with my life. You know, Guru, you never had the opportunity to go to university, um, but your son, Devang, is going to, for his executive MBA at Harvard University. How does that make you feel? You must have some sense of vindication that he's managed to do this. Uh, it's very... Uh, 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 emotional uh, for me because I was not able to study myself 
uh, for two reasons. One was, of course, I was uh, always looking for how to earn bread. Uh, so I was busy earning bread and then concentrating on the school. And I failed in my form six in English twice. In India, the, uh, the passing mark is 35. So first time I got 33, second time I got 34, and f uh, third time I got 36. So I was very happy that a uh, teacher has given me one more mark and I s told everybody I got first class. <laughs> because <laughs> one more mark, then the requirement was enough for me. Of course, later I tried to, when I, were, when I had the time, I studied. But what I'm saying is that I am feeling so, I have no, I thank God every moment. And, and I thank people who, who has blessed me that I was not able to study, but my children or my boy is going to uh, the best university of the world. Mm. Mm. And that's not proud, but I am blessed. Amazing. Yeah, what a story, what a story. <laughs> yeah. I encourage everyone to read this book. Absolutely. It's, it's I have to bring out some, something very interesting uh, that you also shared in the book. Yeah. You had a secret meeting back in 2007 with uh, former President Mwai Kibaki and Kalonzo Misioka, which basically set up uh, the appointment of Kalonzo as VP. Take us through that time. And he also shared it in his book as well. Yes. That means you read the book. <laughs> <laughs> we do our research here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, I, uh, I, the Kenya is at my heart. If somebody tells me that Kenya will benefit by, by doing something for me, I will do anything for that because Kenya has shown me the world. Kenya has given me the life. And if somebody does not appreciate where he earns the bread, uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will tell them that he's not the, the he maybe he may is a different human being. Uh, when I, in 2007, I left uh, it was December. Mm -hmm. I went for holiday in India. And I reached Dubai. I went by Emirates and supposed to go to, to Bombay. And I heard that Kenya have started a problem in this, uh, uh, after the election. I sent my family and I came back. I said, now what to do? Can't get anybody, what not. Waited for some time. And then I did because uh, His Excellency Kibaki, also a very good friend of mine, and uh, like father figure to me, not I can't tell him friend, but he's a father to me. And fa he, he's always advised me in a good thing. And uh, of course, Kalonzo Mushika was a very good friend of mine because I'm in his county, which was, um, at that time there was no county, but it was Eastern province. Mm. So I was one of the biggest investor there and keeping more than 2,000 uh, people from Okambani. So I was very close with him. I sat with the both separately and convinced very difficulty and invited them at home for the dinner, which was also very difficult. They came around 8 o'clock in the evening. His Excellency Kibaki came and uh, His Excellency Kalonzo Mosioka came and uh, there was somebody with him. I, I have written the name uh, in the book. Uh, meeting lasted, lasted about one and a half to two hours. It was very heated, but at the end it was very good. We had dinner peacefully and agreed uh, on that. He both left and uh, end of the day it happened and that was very good for me because uh, that gave the peace to Kenya. Yeah. And I, I was more than blessed to, to have such a big leader to listen to me. Not because of I had something, but because of I think I had something to give back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was so proud and thankful to them. <laughs> Geothermal, you're yeah. venturing into that now. Geothermal, I wanted to do. It is written into the book. Yes. Mm. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, for certain reason, we are uh, we may not go for the geothermal because of uh, some result which we found is not correct, and also uh, we are not very ready for the geothermal with the partnership. Yeah. Bottom line: post handshake, March 9th, mm. which is exactly what six months ago yeah. today. September 9th, March 9th. Are we on the right track? Yes, handshake, we are on the, see, the, the, the something what I wonder in Kenya is, uh, if president does something handshake, everybody start doing handshake. If, if president says now no corruption, then everybody start talking mm. about no corruption. Mm. But it should be there all the time. Mm. It's not that somebody have told, then we start. His excellency is doing the wonderful job, I must tell you that. 
He wants to leave the legacy, but he can't do alone. Yeah. And if everybody is pretending that we are doing, we are supporting, it will not work. They have to prove that they are with him and they are doing it. If they will not do, they are not supposed to be leaders. If they want to do something, they have to make sure that there is action has been taken and it is support has been given. His Excellency has got four years to go and he wants to leave the legacy. He's the one who encouraged me to put the industries, create the employment, nothing else. And I, I want to do anything what I can do, but I want to go for it. And I want to make sure that within next three, four years time, we employ directly 10,000 people. I want 20 other people to do the same. You know, in an age of uh, tenderpreneurs, where most people have built their wealth doing business with government, uh, you've decided, I'm not touching that area. So you've not done business with politicians or government. Why is that? And you've still managed to be this successful. See, the, to do, by doing the business with the government only, you cannot be a good businessman or a rich businessman, or you, can't, you can make money. No, you can make money. I had an uh, experience in, uh, where many years ago in Steel Center when I was trader. Mm. And uh, I was listening from the, some, uh, some other traders that we are supplying to so-and-so company in the government. We supply 10 pieces, but they give us for 20 pieces, the, whatever the items. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, isn't it uh, something you are doing a scene? Because I was a priest, so I have to preach what I, uh, I, what I practice. And I, I, what I practice, that's only I preach. I don't preach anything more or less than that. Mm. So then, no, 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 this is the way to make money. I said, okay. Same time I decided, that was 1986, that we will never do business in any department of the government. Even if it is straightforward, it is better to stay away and give it to your distributor. But we don't, because if I don't do anything directly, my staff may do something wrong, which is not ethically correct. Mm. So we don't do that business with the government, any department. When you die, that day will come? Yep. What would you like them to say about you? What's the one thing? What, who wants to say, uh, what the others, pe yes. people want to say about yeah. me? I don't want, any, once you die, you have disconnected from this world. We don't want, I don't want even a credit from anybody. I, we, I'm not, we don't want to live because once again I say that we are not going to go with, even if you say something good, Jeff will say, or Victoria will say, Guru was a very good person. I'm not going to listen to that because I'm not there. So whatever people say, is, it is not material for me. The material for me is that I have left the legacy, I have left the people of Kenya at least five of them or ten of them whom I have brought from zero to hero. Bas, that's I got my, my credit. I, I can tell to the God when I go there that you gave me one person is guru, you send me here. Your five children, I made them like me. That's my achievement. Wow. Making the best of your time here. No Thank you so it. much. <laughs> Thank from you. grass to grace. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing story. story of guru. Pick it up. A, walk, a long walk to success in autobiography. It's a great read. Fascinating. You'll enjoy it. Guru, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All, All right. right. Taking a short break here on Sunday Live. We'll be back with your feedback. feedback. Absolutely. Keep sending at Kunanga Jeff. At Vicky Rubadiri. Hashtag Sunday Live.